um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this discussion by Citizen Matters Bengaluru. We are back with our event of the month. My name is Sandhya, a community anchor with Citizen Matters, and we are a media organization reporting on critical urban issues, ideas, and solutions for cities. Our topic for today is why not public transport? I'd like to invite my colleague and the editor of Citizen Matters Bengaluru to speak about our work at Citizen Matters. Shravasti. Thank you so much, Sandhya. Citizen Matters is a civic media platform that serves as a knowledge exchange and provides insightful reports on critical urban issues, ideas, and solutions for cities, diving deep into issues that affect our daily life, including water, commute, public safety, air quality, governance, education, environment, local economy, and more. We bring together civic media, data, and diverse voices to help citizens build sustainable, equitable, and livable cities. We provide in-depth information and insights on various critical urban issues to facilitate understanding and the tools for citizens to become change makers. Before we begin, I would just like to make a few things clear, like ground rules. Please feel free to put your questions and comments in the chat box, whoever's joined us via Zoom reg registrations and are with us today. Um, we will try to address each of these questions and comments as best as we can. Please be uh, you know, respectful and please do not indulge in any kind of abuse or personal attacks. Um, before we start, I would like to quickly introduce our esteemed panelists. Shreya Satish Mukhashi is an assistant urban planner at the Directorate of Urban Land Transport Cult. She did her master's of urban and regional planning, land use planning, and management development at SEPT University. Jain Kumar Desai is a senior director at VMware India and founder Sustainability Ecosystem Connect. He has been in leadership roles with 30 plus years of global experience across consulting, engineering, and technology organizations. Srinivas Alavali is a fellow at WRI India working on sustainable mobility. He is also a citizen activist and worked on a variety of issues. He was the co-founder of Citizens for Bengaluru and formerly head civic participation and NGO Janakara. Lalitamba BV is former IT professional and an advocate of sustainable transport. She walks, cycles, and uses public transport. She is also a member of Bengaluru Navanirman Party, whose agenda is to improve Bengaluru and fix local civic issues. Uh, we have actually a video by our reporter Harshita Padmavinod, which we would like to stream right now, following which we will start the panel discussion. My name is Purushottam. I work as a director of recruitment for India and Asia at the company called Atkins, an SNC Lavalin organization. Hi, I'm Manisha. I'm working at Dental Tribal Services. I'm Nesu Tanujanta. I'm a Chilean Education Society and I'm a Shaleli primary teacher. Hi, I'm Christy and I'm working for Thomson Reuters. So I'm Sushmita Reddy. I work for uh, I30 uh, Learning Center. Well, I go by a four-wheeler. I generally use car to reach office. I think an Uber or an Ola. I know two-wheeler and 
I walk sometimes, but usually I take my bike to work. So I use my scooty, my personal mode of commute. It's about um, 35 to 40 minutes, or rather if I put it in the distance, it's about uh, 11 to 12 kilometers from where I stay. About 2 kilometers? Approximately 2.5 kilometers. Either. It's 2 kilometers away. Uh, my office is supposedly 22 kilometers from my house. Public transport, I have tried multiple number of times. I think the time is quite a moving goalpost. So it generally takes about an hour or sometimes an hour and a half. Uh, public transport use maybe maybe on 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, if I had to use public transport, I'll have to go till the bus stop. But my office is near to the bus stop. So I might as well just go straight to the office. So it will take around 20, 25 minutes. If I use public transport. <laughs> that would be, I guess, um, two and a half hours. I think I'm more or less reliable to make it in 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, it takes 10 minutes to reach, but the traffic is such and, you know, sometimes booking it. So around half an hour overall. Hardly 10 to 12 minutes I'll reach out to me. My own bike, uh, less than 10 minutes. Private vehicle takes around um, an hour and a half. Well, you know what, the most reliable part is, is that, you know, I have meetings and I have to reach on a certain time and which is quite possible using my private transport, like in my, in my car, I know which routes, what density of traffic exists and that's, that's where I use my private transport. Uh, because there are not much public transport available throughout Bangalore to be honest but I live in an area near Hebbal so it links with you know a highway as well so just to be safe and find easy access to transport I just casually book an Uber on Ola. interior <laughs> Uh, daily, but I give one do bus bitter in the other bus barala. Other in the game now, sometimes in a row, num time we get back on the Ganam Gilly transport sick there, other in the Navu private vehicles get addicted. I prefer private transport because I have uh, shift timings for my work schedule. So right now I've got a shift where I have to work from 3 pm to 12 am. So even if I do get a bus or an auto or something at 3 p.m. It's difficult for me to find something like that at 12 a.m. So I have easy access to my bike. I can just go back home. So it's convenient, and also I will not have to. Uh, I will not get into the hassle of um, not getting into the proper shop or you know. Um, so it's it's basically a little more convenient, and given uh, that public transports are. Um, not very efficient in uh, places like Bangalore, so I guess that's a better option. I think I need more reliable, practical you know, time availability in terms of public transport, and I would definitely would love to be on it. Uh, but today's situation is such that you know I don't know when does the bus come for me to connect to metro, or how how much time would it take, what's the traffic jam situations and all of that, which makes it very very unpredictable. So it's, if it's more predictable and reliable, then I would definitely go on a public transport. It being easily accessible, I guess, uh, available till the joints. For example, if the metro also comes nearby, even just for one stop, I'm willing to take it. But as such, I don't have an alternative. Main lagi auru itara interior place means andre sulpa main road ge ola gade iruvan ta area galke one do erido busso. Or stand marde idro parva gila just hange. Pass other bus at the school to pass Agatha Idruno Sakunam. Athara on the facility go to Chanagirate. Right now, I've been hearing about constructions of metro stations nearby. So, if not to my office, if other places also, if there's a metro station nearby, then I don't mind walking 10 15 minutes to the metro station and then taking the metro. But without a metro station, I don't know. I don't think I would easily switch to public transport. 
आई गेस एफिशियंट पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट एनी थिंग विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द मेट्रोज एंड बसेस मे बी द गवर्नमेंट शुड रिलीज मोर of the public transport and make it accessible to people uh, rather than getting um, along with uh, the other known schemes so yeah i guess they should bring in more uh, transport for people to be able to access it thank you thank you harshita for that video uh hi everybody i am meera and i'll be moderating the panel today and i request our panelists to uh, switch on their videos as well sini lalitamba um is rini is rini was you there yeah yeah hi sri was now lalita yeah, yeah i think we have all the panelists thanks uh okay so let me just start with a little bit of context right and and uh, as somebody who's been here in the city for for many decades now uh and i think this is probably the time where we have pretty good public transport if i may say myself um so we right now have uh, for 6000 buses and we have the metro in has uh, there are multiple phases and it kind of reaches uh, pretty significant portions of the city right so right now metro is carrying about 5.7 lakhs and of course buses bmtc buses are much much bigger uh they have around 40 lakh ridership uh, the post pandemic so these are significant numbers but meanwhile we are also seeing like this is a city and especially after covid the number of vehicles has literally doubled from uh, about 60 lakhs in 10 years ago to more than a crore right now so literally at this rate i think we'll have one vehicle per uh, you know unit population almost so this is sort of the situation and while you know we are everybody is encouraging uh, we are talking about getting more people to public transport uh, to reduce the traffic to improve air quality etc cetera, etc cetera. where do we start so srinivas i'd like you to kind of come on board and like to talk about give the context uh, because right now with the traffic uh, people say okay this uh, buses and trains take too long and therefore you know we are taking our public transport and because there are so many uh, private uh, vehicles they they are taking their private transport uh, vehicles like cars or bikes and because there are so many cars and bikes out there buses take much longer as well and therefore it becomes one catch 22 situation and you know things are not changing we're just getting seeing the traffic getting worse and worse so what is the context and like where does your initiative come into this you want to just give us that you're on mute sreemas mm. you are you able to un, not unmute yourself it is not able to do it so oh. who's yeah the... i got it i'm on i'm on i'm good yeah thanks uh, something about the setting my apologies yeah thanks mira and and what a wonderful video you pretty much covered everything and uh, you know all sorts of people types of commutes and modes of trans transport um i think it uh, beautifully sets the conversation for today uh, i i really appreciate uh, citizen matters uh, and our one foundation for doing it because uh, you know we need more of this why not public transport you know i think one of the things that has happened in the city I was in steel flyover and subsequent uh, street campaigns for public transport is that has been a huge uh, ecosystem for uh, people that advocate and champion public transport has been created which is great and uh, you know I remember in 2016 the the talk of the town is flyovers and now the talk of the town is public transport whichever 
officer or politician you talk to or media you talk to, they always talk about public transport. So I consider that as a very positive shift in the narrative and the mindset. And like you said, the capacity of public transport is also dramatically increased. Uh, but I think the time has come to break out of all the existing ecosystems and eco chambers where everybody agrees that public transport is important and listen to the like the gentleman in the video, why it is that they, they are not able to use the public transport, what can be done? So in this context, um, uh, some of us came together, uh, WRI India and uh, um, EPAC, uh, who many of you know, we've started a, an initiative called uh, Personal to Public. Personal to Public, meaning personal transport to public transport. It's a very um, unique initiative, I must say, having uh, been in this uh, field for a few years, uh, working as a citizen activist and, and later in Janagraha and now in WRI India. We, we run a lot of campaigns, so we run programs, we work with the government agencies, but rarely you try, you are able to build a coalition across different uh, stakeholder groups. So that is the uniqueness of this campaign. And uh, it is really to do what you just said. Now that there is public transport, how do you get people to use it? So uh, with your permission, I'll share my screen just for a, a couple of minutes on to, uh, you know, inform the, those here on what this particular thing is about. Yeah. So are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. So this is called personal to public. The number two, I want to draw your attention to the idea of two is that make the people, make the citizens try to use public transport two days a week. There's a very long story behind it. I will spare you the details, but the number two is very important. The idea is to nudge. Idea is to say that, look, we know that you are comfortable in your two hour drive in the personal, uh, in your scooty, the the, uh, uh, the lady in the video talked about and, and the gentleman, the, the first gentleman who talked about uh, getting to his meetings on time. We know that, we understand that you have your own personal reasons and it's not always convenient. So, but can you please try two days a week? That is our, our pitch here. That is our message here. And uh, if, if everyone did that, then automatically, you know, uh, two days a week is, uh, is good uh, 40%, right? 40% of the traffic should come down. 40% of personal vehicles should come down. So this is the thinking behind it. So um, if every office did it and every, every individual did that, then it will, it will add up and will show uh, an impact on the city. That is the thinking behind it. And uh, why WR and BPAC? I won't go into that, but both these organizations have worked for many years on, on first mile and last mile access. They have uh, spent enormous amounts of time on research, studying, field work, working with the agencies and all of that. That's why we came together like this. Why now? I, in, you know, I'm, I'm someone that uh, tends to exaggerate things or gets carried away about the various things. I'm an eternal optimist also. So that's a warning that I'm giving you right now. But with that warning, I will also tell you that I think this year is going to be a milestone year for Brand Bengal. Why is that? And someone mentioned in the video and, uh, and Mira also mentioned. So we have this metro that is going everywhere to everywhere, but not where really people are going, right? The three biggest areas where lakhs of cars go every day are Outer Ring Road, and then Electronic City, and then Whitefield Madhupura area. These are the three biggest places of work where the, the standard mode of commute is car, single person car is the biggest number of uh, vehicles go to these places, causing traffic congestion not only there, but even in other residential areas as far as Maleshwaram or Jayanagara, or any other place. So what the first time this year, the metro is going to reach two of these areas. One is the white field, which is partially open, as you know, and fully open next month when the connection between Bayapunhali and KR Pura is going to be connected. Subsequently, Electronic City is slated for December 2023. That's when the line between Jayanagar to Electronic City will come up immediately bringing metro accessible to lakhs of people that work in Electronic City. And another amazing thing happened this year with Shakti, uh, something that we, we should celebrate more because we went from 30 lakh daily trips to 40 lakh daily trips in a matter of few weeks, thanks to the Shakti scheme. So for all the, all the arguments and rationalization we hear about when somebody will take public transport, I want the, uh, you know, the uh, people on this uh, call to remember that 
affordability is a very, very big lever. The moment it became cheap, it went up by 30%. And, and women, only cheap, not cheap for everyone, right? Only for women, it's free. But still, it led to a 30% trips. And early studies show that the male travelers have also increased in, in uh, not only in BFTC, but across that. So that's something to celebrate. 920 new buses are coming this year. Mira and I have been working on bus campaigns for, you know, 10 years or more. And we always used to say increase number of buses, increase number of buses. They kept increasing here and there, but they also you have to retire buses. Remember that after a certain number of kilometers and years, buses go away. So because of that, the number of buses remain constant till 6,500. In 2013, we had 6,500 buses. In 2023, also we have 6,500 buses. But now we are getting 900 new buses. It's a big, big milestone like that. Similarly, this year, DULT has been working on active mobility. The BMLT has come up. They're doing a lot of interventions on cycling and uh, uh, walking. BBMP is investing big money on footpath improvements and junction improvements. So combining all of these things, I feel like this year is going to be a very big year for public transport in Bangalore. That's why we brought together all of these stakeholders, including government agencies and civil society. And the most important stakeholder, you will hear from JN today, he's a fantastic guy who sits in the, you know, one of those big IT company offices, but thinks about sustainability and has founded this beautiful forum where nearly 100 companies are coming together and see how they can contribute to the city and to the planet. So all of them are now part of this campaign called Personal to Public. We even have the ARDU, Auto Rickshaw Drivers Union, as part of our, our uh, team. And we're all trying to create this campaign. And the initial uh, uh, plan of this is to run a survey. We have what's called the Bengaluru Commuter Survey. It has no personal information. Uh, the website is called personaltopublic.in. When you go into the survey, it'll look like this. You can do it in Kannada or English. Takes less than three minutes and no personal information is asked for. And the idea is that once you have give us the, the survey insight, we will create action plans for various agencies, not only at a city level, but at a station level. And that's how we plan to improve the first and last mile access that we have in uh, Bengaluru as the Whitefield line for Metro comes up and preparing for the electronic city thing. The basic thinking here, Mira, is that unless and until you shift people that are currently using two-wheeler or four-wheeler into public transport, it's not going to make a difference. What generally happens is those that are currently taking a BMTC from Banshankari to Whitefield, are likely to take the metro from Banshankari to Whitefield, which is good, but that's not going to change the ground scenario. So what do we need to do is to think about those that are taking the car and going to uh, Whitefield, can they switch to metro at least twice a week? And the role of the employers is extremely important in this, in my opinion, because they have a big responsibility here. They are the ones that have created these huge complexes, IT parks with lots of parking spaces and a lot of that uh, for various reasons historically. And that's how it was. And as we know in our society, vehicular ownership is an aspirational thing. When you make it in life, you have your own car, then you buy your house and so on and so forth. But that doesn't need to come in from a commute point of view. By all means, own your car, enjoy your car. But can you please take public transport a few days a week so that you reduce the congestion and pollution in the city. That is what we're trying to do. I'm happy to inform you and everyone here that we've got a very positive response from whoever we talked about this in the government as well. And many initiatives are underway, even uh, otherwise, without our this particular intervention. So we're hoping that all of these things will come together and create a really good public transport uh, environment for all citizens in Bengaluru. So we'll see a dramatic drop in, in uh, you know, number of people forcing or choosing to use four-wheelers or two-wheelers and shifting to public transport. I think I've exceeded my time, so I'll, I'll pause here and I'll come back later when you give me more time. Thank you. Thank you, Srini. Uh, you are truly an optimist, but then we have come a long way right from the days of uh, Bas Bhagya Beko and Chukubuko and all of that. So over the years, there have been many campaigns and there have also been many interventions like bus lane and so on. 
uh, and definitely one can agree that this conversation or this public discourse about transportation, commute, you know, non-motorized transport, all of that is pretty loud in Bangalore, perhaps the loudest in, that we can see in India. But having said that, so uh, last time we had a data jam, if you remember, in February we had done that. We actually asked people who were participating uh, in the data jam to look at transport and mobility, right? And some of the findings, for example, um, so there are seven constituencies with zero metro stations uh, and uh, they have close to 25% of the city's population. And then in many constituencies, on average, people have to travel at least like over two kilometers to reach the station. And then there are many areas where there aren't bus stops. Like if people have to travel more than 500 meters, then there's really, you can't expect them to actually like, uh, you know, adopt public transport. So these are issues are there. There are these like black spots and, uh, you know, areas. For example, somebody living in Kudlu who has to, let's say, get to ORR, there are no buses, right? Even though as the crow flies, it's pretty short. Uh, of course, there are people who can cycle and so on. But given the traffic, again, people have this like, uh, you know, worry about safety and so on. So the whole, my question, next question is to Shreya. And do you think from a design perspective, right? How have we incorporated transport, public transport into our city design itself? Is that the issue? And uh, even now, I don't know, is there like a correlation between where is the, where are the most number of commuters versus where the, uh, you know, metro lines are running or where the bus routes are planned? So from, as a planner, where do you think the gaps are and how we can, how can we fix these gaps? Uh, yeah, so, you know, the metro actually just runs on the trunk roads in Bangalore. And we expect that bus kind of feeds into this system. So also with the upcoming suburban rail, uh, we don't expect the suburban rail or the metro to reach every neighborhood or every ward in Bangalore, but we uh, intend to enhance other modes. So for example, we have the transit-oriented development policy for Bangalore, uh, which was approved last year. And based on the policy, we are developing uh, TOD zone plans. So uh, the zone plans are actually based on 666 criteria, which is on accessibility to transit stations. So I think this also came up in the video. And I also see a comment in the chat that mentions first and last mile connectivity issues uh, to public transport uh, stations, right? So the 666 criteria is the first six uh, is with respect to the core TOD zone, which explains six minutes walking. So at any point within the TOD zone, a person should be able to reach the transit station by walking for six minutes. Uh, the second six is so the standard TOD zone uh, in which within six minutes of cycling or 12 minutes of walking, you're able to reach a transit station. And this roughly uh, translates to about one kilometer. Beyond that one kilometer, the third six represents enhancing uh, bus feeder systems so that people even outside one kilometer, which is outside the TOD zone, can easily access public transport stations. So uh, this is something that DULT has been working on. Uh, and along with uh, ADB technical assistance, we are developing TOD zone plans for select stations on the 2A and 2B metro corridor. Also for the upcoming suburban stations, DULT is working in-house to develop uh, TOD zone plans. So uh, this is something that we are doing to enhance first and last mile connectivity. Also to ensure that people who are living close to transit stations uh, feel comfortable to use uh, public transport or sustainable modes, walking and cycling. Right. Um, I get it that from a policy perspective or even as a planner, this makes sense. But, you know, in reality, for example, Bangalore's literally consists of a number of villages, which is at the end of the day, a bunch of villages in the middle of the city, right? Uh, so there are roads which are really narrow, sub-arterial roads which are actually narrow enough they're passing through villages how do you actually you know have there are roads which cannot even account for a bus like a regular bus right and we really have to think creatively saying okay do we need like uh you know mini buses do we need like uh you know shared quasi public transport or autos what are the different kind of things 
in an ideal situation i understand the constraints from a you know from departmentally there are various groups in charge and of course there's this whole you know conversation about umta all of that i'm not going to get in there today we will focus only on getting people to use buses and metro but how do you even get buses to these kind of areas so yeah it's what what do you, would you advise as a planner right? not not prescriptively but from a design perspective right? okay uh, so i would answer this taking the example of maleshwaram so as you know maleshwaram is one of the oldest areas in bangalore with the narrowest roads uh, parking that happens and uh, you know rampantly so uh, we are currently working on loop services uh, which is from the sampigi road metro station but because these roads are so narrow our regular buses don't actually go through so we are depending on bntc who is procuring these mini buses which are 7 meter buses and they can go through the narrow roads of maleshwaram so that is something that we are considering and uh, working on so yeah i mean uh thank you uh let me then move on to jayan uh jayan desa you been like in the tech corporate space for many many years you understand where you know people's perspectives from that space uh so if you could just tell us about uh you know your initiatives and how do you think this can change that's one and i after that i will also follow on with some questions that we got from uh, readers and general citizens specifically about tech as such uh just to give again context uh just speaking of orr i just saw this recent graphic which talked about there are 6.4 lakh employees and 3.4 lakh vehicles so we really uh, you know it's I, i don't even know how these vehicles are fitting in in, the, in these roads like you're whole mira first of all uh, to hats off to citizen matters you and your team and wri vpack for getting such discussion center stage center stage and last few months and i'll talk a little bit about my role first of all when you and uh, shrini introduced me it sounded like i am the guy in the ivory towers but i'll talk a little bit that it's actually opposite completely opposite and uh, part of my role here today is besides representing the corporates is the sustainability initiative which i care a lot and that is about a year old now uh with 100 plus mncs as members some of them are here today and we have joined forces with uh, this initiative because it makes so much sense problem number 1 you rightly touched upon the video touched upon and there's a lot of emotions flowing in the chat messages but my request friends to all of you is stay tuned to this panel you will get some answers or some road map for the future we cannot solve everything by sitting on a zoom meeting and it will take systematic efforts collaborative forces to come together to solve abc of what comes out of the survey which has been launched step number 1 is to get the survey done in next two weeks we have been putting lot of efforts with shrinivas and his team because data speaks for itself it cuts the emotions and noise from reality so i have challenged everybody today everyone here should do it and get 10 more ambassadors to do it it will really help now coming to your question meera the sustainability effort is focused specifically on three areas and it has a connect to everything we are discussing today number 1 technology to scale because most of the solutions for urban development or sustainability if you see get handicapped because either they are done in the developed countries and are at a price point which are very prohibitive for scale so the one of the mandate for all the mncs to come together my vision along with some of my core team members was to see if companies can come together work with the government and india for some of you who are you know come here with a critical mindset today one point to note we are one of the only countries which has something called bharat stack 
the UPI, the vaccine program, and now the public goods platform. There is no other country which has this. And today there's an announcement, Sri Lanka is adopting it. So let's also be positive on what is happening, but there's more to be done. And tech for good will help get this technology companies with their power, their might to work with the government to solve using technology and scale solutions. Very relevant to what we are discussing. And I'll touch upon that, Mira. I know you want me to touch upon that. The second area is policy advocacy. And I don't know whether you caught that. Just to solve the last mile problem in Bangalore, nine organizations have to work together. Srinivas hurried through the slide. Think about the scale and the complexity to solve some of these issues. So, second area we are touching under the sustainability area is policy advocacy. Work with subject matter experts from the industry, partner with NGOs, partner with trade bodies, partner with associations like you, like Mira, like Citizen Matters and WRI, to get proactive, progressive policies established. And we are doing some tremendous work. 22 policies in one year have been constructively modified in partnership with the government. And the third area is, can employees be a force for good? Criticism is easy, but under CSR, can we collect this lacks of employees we have, starting with Bangalore and we, I wish we can drive this to other cities where metros are coming, but starting with Bangalore, can lack of this employees who are eager and passionate to contribute beyond their day jobs and do something in partnership as a philanthropy activity to help solve some of these issues. And you have heard about Ugly Indians and some of these initiatives, but there's a lot more which can be done. In fact, some of you may would love to know that the entire Whitefield Metro, as it gets launched in August, there are few NGOs and trade bodies already working on the beautification. And I know Footpath was a big subject in the chat right now, but that has already been taken up by partnership with the corporates. So these are the three broad construct on the sustainability initiative, Mira. It's uh, about one year old baby. Some passionate folks came together we have 100 plus companies. And with that force, we are supporting and joining hands on the P2P initiative now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jayan. Uh, but I have a very specific question as well. Uh, what do you see companies doing or at least ideating to kind of specifically encourage public transport itself? Because one, I mean, one of course, like one of the you know feedback that I got today was saying there is no way to predict an end-to-end -end, like sort of a commute, right? If I have to take an auto from A to B, I have to take a bus from B to C and let's say another metro, whatever, and another last mile walking. Right now, there is no app which even gives people a kind of a guideline saying this is what you need to do. Yes. You know, let alone say this is when the next bus is. So, is there something? Is that something like you are considering, given that? the capacity in, in the sector. That's that's one question. But other question is more about, you know, meeting expectations or like, uh, you know, using carrots and sticks to kind of uh, incentivize and disincentivize uh, private transport as well. Great question. And I'll, pardon me for the longest answer because I'm going to break this up into two parts for the benefit of all so that we carry some takeaways and some positivity. First is the role of corporates. And we have thousands in Bangalore, thank God. It's the most progressive city right now, the highest, second highest GST earner, the third highest income tax contributor. There are so many positives team, but coming together gets some advantages. So what corporates can do is first of all, raise awareness amongst employees. There is an inertia. Some of the sentiments here in the chat are very logical. Hey, it's too cumbersome, takes time, too many switch over between vehicles. It's just not conducive. So first is corporate scan drive awareness. Some of them have started, some of them can do better. 
but fresh start relaunching p2p was a silver lining it was good timing because after pandemic every company is now getting back employees so timing wise excellent right the second is a lot of companies already have adopted ev vehicles in the fleet but there are still uh, challenges there on both technology price points and scale because not every vendor providing fleet services is equipped today so that is again where corporates can come and drive commercialization of ev infrastructure for ev and corporates can make a mandate to go 100% ev which also by design takes away private vehicles off the road one shot because everybody would love to use the corporate fleet why not it is free it is convenient you can read listen to music many advantages the third is it started in a small way again in bangalore which is carpooling went nowhere but strongly suggest corporates can promote carpooling and incentivize it maybe reimburse the fuel charges for employees who drive their vehicle and get four other employees on the same route to office it's a big big support and can be done without a blink of an eye it can be done from tomorrow by the way some companies have done it but not all so the wait, most wait. yeah wait, sorry wait. the other critical part on how companies and the technology might can help this initiative and beyond and i don't think we have done enough but there is an attempt to start that as i just talked about the sustainability initiative where multimodal design on cities and urban planning shreya i don't want to get into your area pardon me but there are very systematic technology where you can map demographic you can map income levels you can map traffic congestion mira talked about roads there is a very scientific model which are already available in rest of the world we just need to adopt that and that will part one on urban design the second part and we have worked and lived and loved entitlement so this is a bit harsh but i want to say this incentivize employees case in point if on ondc platform like namo yatri some of you may know we launched a competitor to uber ola which is free of commission free of searches uh, it went live few months back so if you are not getting uber ola thank god we have a app developed in india on the ondc platform which is owned by the taxi drivers and there is an attempt to do similar thing for metro so can we have an app using ai which helps dynamically plan your travel say i want to go from whitefield to jp nagar and i do that 2 hours a day by the way for some of you on the call that's why this topic is so passionate for me if you can map your logistics in any given time of day and the technology exists it just needs to be integrated go to google now it will tell you the fastest route to reach jp nagar using walking bus and taxi right now guess what if metro comes in if it can give an integrated plan daily at any time of the day number 2 if every person here in bangalore can show his carbon saving by using public transport and it's also possible can we incentivize parking in malls at a subsidized rate can corporates give free parking can they give sudex so coupons for people clocking the maximum carbon saving this app integration is de definitely possible mira got it so simple says i'm not giving you 5 10 year horizon i'm giving solutions which are possible in the next 6 months i get it i i get the tech is already available but are there companies 
uh, you know, which can serve as best practices, who are actually doing this? Are they people uh, charging for parking spots? Are they people giving free bus passes or, you know, metro passes or whatever? Are they people incentivizing people who are coming on cycle with some Sodexo passes, like you're saying? Are they people already doing it among the, you know, big set of uh, companies that are part of your uh, initiative? Yes. All of the above, but it can be more pervasive and consistent, Meera, to be very blunt and transparent. It's not pervasive because the best practices are not shared that easily. Part of this initiative, which I've started, we want to do that under sustaining. We want to promote more best practice sharing. And for those interested, I do a monthly session now. So we can call that, I, I don't know, uh, you know, some may call it sense of entitlement, some may call it higher expectation. Uh, but whatever it is, there is definitely a difference in uh, uh, perhaps an average uh, Bangalorean, you know, uh, taking a bus versus somebody who's coming from a corporate background or a professional background saying, oh, I my time is valuable. The cost of my time is much higher than you know, I don't want to waste it getting into uh, public transport. So that's a we'll have to crack that. It's becoming one of these catch twenty two situations. Uh, next, Lalita, do you want to? I mean, if you can just come in from uh, what are the other issues that you see? We know the standard issues. We know uh, you know there is last mile connectivity issues. The time it takes to when you take public transport. Fundamentally, even the walkability when you don't have proper forget footpaths, but even the roads are not walkable often to get to the nearest bus stop, there are huge challenges there, no doubt. Uh, what about other kind of issues? Like one of the, as part of the conversation when we were announcing this event, a lot of people came back and said, okay, one is, you know, buses are not stopping in the, uh, at, at the stops in the right place. Uh, they're too crowded. And the behavior from, uh, you know, from the conductors or the other commuters, especially for, uh, you know, women, had these kind of responses as well. The attitude was a big issue. Uh, so are there like other things that you have seen or you have heard of which you think are kind of uh, preventing people from even considering public transport? Yeah. Hi, Meera. Hi, everyone. So I will break this into two things, right? For, first, I was in an IT company and I've never driven. I don't like driving in this Bangalore road. So I to cause stress to myself and to the road, right? So I like to be always in the passenger seat. Uh, as Jayan said, uh, carpooling is something that I used for three years. I made good friends, good number of friends now. Uh, that is something number one. And uh, second was uh, I have used a comp and the company that I worked introduced BMTC as one of the major, uh, this one, Ra starting from Electronic City till Pena, there were a lot of buses that were introduced. So I think as he said, corporates uh, can take up all these steps. So that is in an IT uh, mode that I was talking. Now, coming as a citizen mode, uh, I'll take an example of HSR layout, right? We do conduct, there are a lot of issues. To talk about issues, everything has been spoken. Now, I would like to see as a very positive outlook. We know that one day things are going to change and slowly we are talking about it one by one. I'm sure WRIP, PAC, all of us will work together along with agencies. We have to go step by step, step by step. No point in sitting and cribbing from here. We all know about it. So what steps do we take? I feel from the other side, the change starts from me, myself. So I have, we have cycle day, HSR cycle day, which is a mode to introduce cycling as one of the, if hundred of people think uh, definitely uh, carpooling is one of the quick thing. Day before one person who used to send a picture about traffic jam all the time, I said, have you tried carpooling? A answer was that before COVID, he was giving it. I think post COVID people are a little scared. They think COVID is still around, right? I said, change that mindset. Why don't you start today evening? Yesterday morning, he sent me a message. Yes, I've restarted uh, carpooling. I will give for four more people. So that way, immediate, without much changes, carpooling is an option that people should take. I believe there is not much thing required. Even it's not from point A till the company, right? They can take, they can use it for shorter distances as well. So that gives one of the incentives. So that's number one. I feel uh, we can use a combination. Footpaths, yes, definitely. At least a walkable footpath is given. We are not talking about any fancy ones. A simple... A drain over a uh, slab over a drain has become our footpath in the village areas, right? 
So we request BBMP at least give walkable footpath. People will not take two wheelers for one kilometer and all. People will walk, definitely. So that infrastructure, I don't think too much is required. Remove the hawkers or the vendors of the footpath, make it walkable because people are risking walking on the main roads. Number two in HSR, what we have tried is cycling day. Is a mode where to encourage cycling as one of the mode for local commute. We see a lot of people. I have a friend who commutes from Sarjapur to HSR for his uh, this one. Yes, there is fear on the road. There are so many vehicles, etc. My point is, if I can walk on the left coast, I will be on the left coast. So I use cycle. So that's my perspective. So I am very positive about it. And whenever I have to go towards the this one, I use a combination of buses and this. So for people, I say, as Srini also said, come out of the comfort zone. Try at least once a week or four times a month be the chain that we want to see i think it will start hundreds of people start this so public uh, i mean private to personal to public uh, kind of thing that will move on so that's my take so we need to try unless each of us try it is not possible while other uh, steps as we said is being uh, addressed step by step uh thanks lalita uh, but are, are there lessons we can learn from like metro, for example, because again, like one, uh, one person said, right, right from comfort, sitting on a bus seat and there are broken seat covers or there are, you know, the bars are not like, you know, easy to access. Just like the fact that, you know, the buses are not necessarily cleaned every day, you will find like a lot of litter you know, inside the bus and they're not clean. There's all this, uh, you know, grime on the sides and so on. Uh, compare this with the metro. So metro has this fancier tag, right? And and you feel like, you know, you're being treated with dignity, you're walking down, it's like whatever, air condition, it's clean and things are on time and it's all clearly written. We, in a way, we have kind of literally, you know, ignored the whole bus service. You know, you will never see, a, you rarely see a bus with a proper sign, signage, right? Of course, the new LED boards are there, but People are so used to, they will wait and they will ask the conductor, um, the driver saying, hello, or yeah. can I go here, right? That understanding is just a common, uh, you know, uh, knowledge of how to use buses has kind of, I feel has come down. And Srini, do you want to kind of come in and how the whole Friends of BMTC initiative actually addressed it? And is this something that we can scale up? Can we have every community can have like a friend of BMTC who can be like the you know nodal center of saying, how can you use public transport? And perhaps that is something that Jayan can, uh, you know, look at for corporates as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy to, uh that you mentioned friends of BMTC. It is a, a community that has 2000 people right now on a telegram channel. And uh, it's like a walking encyclopedia of everything that has got to do with bus in this city. Lalita, for example, is an expert of any bus that comes and goes through HSR layout and maybe few other areas. And there are other people like Lalita that are aware of buses from Kengeri to uh, Whitefield and from uh, Dasarhalli to Kanakpura Road. So there are a lot of people like that, and they're they they're passionate about bus, and they, uh, you know, um, they understand everything that's got to do with it. So because the uh, information system the app for BMTS well, BMTC was taking a long time, and the, you know, if you go to any other country or a city outside India, you will find a way to know when is the next bus coming. In a case in point, I was in Dublin in my last job. When I used to work in the corporate world, I went to Dublin day one. I took the the city bus to go back to the hotel from the airport because I just could sitting in the office. I could tell that the bus is coming in the three next three minutes. So I walked out. As I walked to the bus stop, the bus arrived. I got on the bus. So that kind of thing is not possible here yet. So BMTC now has an app which is. Uh, kind of published and it's still undergoing some updates and so on, but that will give you, you don't need to know the bus number, for example, you, you will know that. So in the short term and also as a human interface, we created Friends of BMTC. Anyone can join this. It's a Telegram channel. I'll post the link on the chat and you will get information. You can ask, okay, tomorrow I need to go from Indra Nagar to Malaysia. How do I go? And in the next few minutes, you will get three different options with, you know, the most optimal options. And so, on. so that's the kind of uh, community that we have built. And um, we'll be happy to know that there are many communities that have this. HSR has a bus community. The Kanakpura Road have a bus community. There are telegram groups for airport Y Vajra buses, where there are the Whitefield uh, to airport Y Vajra bus has some 5,000 people on it. 
So these are the people that regularly use the Vayu Vajra to go to the airport and uh, the BMTC staff runs these telegram groups. They even post, okay, we are running like late or in Kanakpura Road, those guys have gone to a completely different level. When the flight is delayed, they will post on the group, please hold the bus and the bus will be waiting for them so that they can make it to the bus. This is a serious level of commitment and love and passion and support from BMTC. BMTC does amazing work. In our city, we try to, uh, we, we look at various government agencies and including BBMP and BMTC and we have a lot of complaints and rightly so. But we often forget that these are agencies with very limited staff. BBMP, for example, has 50% staff shortages. And somehow, magically, they're serving 1.5 crore people. Right. Every ward, every two wards have one engineer. Similar thing with BMTC. The number of uh, staff and number of people that do the planning and all are very limited. And yet, they try to do the best that they can. And they've created a lot of interesting ecosystem. The Friends of BMTC also has an active dialogue going on with BMTC right now. So through the interactions we have with the commuters, we try to bring them up at the uh, different uh, department heads and depot level, and they often respond as well. So that's the other angle of Friends of BMTC. And I must tell you that uh, the Friends of BMTC have been invited to BMTC office two times. Some 30, 40 of us were sat across the table with them and had three-hour discussions with them. So this is public connect, right? And BMTC also has made a resolution to participate in the ward committee meetings. Their challenge was that they have only 60 depots, depot managers, and we have 243 wards. So where should the depot manager go? Right. So we have this kind of governance challenges. But otherwise, from a, a public connect point of view, all of these agencies try to do their best. Metro also is very receptive to public feedback. They are not very active on social media, unlike the other ones. But whenever you work with them, you will find that they're doing great work. For example, they got four metro stations to have pre-fixed auto stations now, MG Road and Bipanali and a couple of other stations. Uh, so where you walk out of the station, like you go to Majestic or Cantonment, you find the prepaid uh, auto counter, you find the auto counter in front of the metro stations too. This is entirely the work of Bangalore Metro, uh, Nama Metro and Bangalore Police working with the auto guys. So initiatives are happening at scale is another challenge. And then the perceptions, right? A lot of people think that, oh, it's not great. And, and one, one behavioral comment I want to make, uh, Mira, based on what everyone has said so far, is that when we were growing up, in those of us that are, you know, 80s, 90s, and all of that, you know, bus is something that every, almost everyone in this group has been in a bus, okay, in college, school, whatever. And that time it was like a, being in crowded places. It's a fun thing and all of that. So you think that when you make it, you don't want to be in this anymore. So that's a big uh, barrier, right? And even today I made a Twitter poll and fascinating comments have come in from hundreds of people and all that. It needs to be comfortable. And I remember what Mr. R. Ashoka said one time. Basu, basnali istri shirt sariya girbe. You cannot have an iron shirt crumple in a bus. Only then people will take a bus in Bangalore. That's why we worked on the Volvo buses, he told me. This is in 2016. So he's right. A lot of people, for a lot of people, going in a bus means it's not comfortable when you arrive in office, your shirt is crumpled and you're not presentable and so on. We need to understand that. We need to address these things. That's why metro is preferred by some people than bus. But bus also can do this. If, if you today... A lot of people like me use the airport Vayu Vajra bus to travel within the city. It's possible. It can be done. And not many know this. So we have to work on all of these uh, dimensions and then make it, uh, you know, happy uh, working for them. That's why the emphasis on two, Mira. Yeah. We so can't make our city Tokyo tomorrow. That's not happening. Or Amsterdam. It'll take a few years. In the meanwhile, can you, as the city has given so much to you, you made your family here, your children go to school here, you have your house here, all of that. Can you not give back a little bit to the city, right? So that's that's the appeal we're trying to make while working on the improvements at the same time. Mira, I just want to share one small thing, what he sure. said. Uh, one, two years ago, a BMTC bus stop was about one and a half kilometers even uh, away from our this. We had tried uh, getting the shuttle services to our area twice. Uh, earlier after vehicle free day once in 2017 
the model that we had chosen was little difficult. Second time, it was not publicized much. It was very difficult. In fact, we had seen people who came for the inauguration, 100 people got into the bus, 99% were first timers. They said uh, 25 years and uh, before only they had actually boarded the bus. That's how it was, right? After that, we said, okay, we'll not ask for first mile, last mile directly, but we'll ask for an extension of the bus. We approach BMTC. They were happier to give. They were happier to give. And uh, actually it came. You know, there was no group. Today we are a group of BMTC with uh, KIA services uh, and uh, the regular BMTC from two, three different depots, etc. And, uh, you know, 380 people are there in that group. Every day people ask, is there something that goes, though it may not be there, somebody else gives a suggestion. So step number one, people have started talking about BMTC. And similarly to the cycling group. Cycling group was just about 70, 80 people till last October. We restarted our cycling. People are interested in cycling. Yes, we need to make a bit of better infrastructure. But today we are about, I think, 600 uh, people in that group all over. And HSR is one which is consistently running the HSR cycle. We, encourage, we have our own challenges. But we'll not give up. We'll keep working with that. And HSR is still awaiting for the first mile, uh, the feeder services to start. Hopefully, it will start at the earliest. So we will want to set as an example and be an encouragement to other parts of the city. Yes, we have to do something for our city and we will uh, all try and give it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Srini, when you talked about this whole, whatever, there are telegram groups, there is, uh, you know, even right from the days of bus day uh, to, you know, supporting the government and helping them, like, you know, uh, collaborating with finding roads, etc. and all that. So... I mean, in a way, I can say hashtag this can happen only in Bangalore. But on the other hand, we're also sort of literally filling in for the gaps in the system, right? We are trying to compensate for, uh, you know, issues in governance. And at some level, BMTC itself, buses itself have been kind of completely ignored, right? From the time they built these two double flyovers saying, oh, we will have like a BRTS and that BRTS never happened because the bus, the lanes were too, too narrow. So we've just been doing ad hoc stuff over the years. Buses still have been ignored. We've been talking about increasing the number of buses. We are still at 6,000. There is a recent announcement about leasing EV, but we're just talking about 100. Oh, we will add 120, 130. I remember when you had that earlier campaign, it was double the number of buses, half the you know ticket. Okay, at some level, you can say, okay, with Shakti, uh, you know, it's the, the scheme, we have somewhat reduced the, uh, you know, the cost of traveling, at least for women. But we are never going to get there unless there is this huge public, uh, you know, push to say, fix our buses, right? We have rules, regulations, which do not allow private buses, even though many of them are sort of in the gray areas, they are official buses are still flying. And of course, they are now complaining because of the Shakti scheme, they are losing money. But they were serving a purpose. They were, uh, you know, in these informal bands, matadors and all, after their corporate, uh, stay, uh, you know, legs, they would just pick up people uh, waiting on the side because there weren't enough buses. When are we going to fix it? And how, as a, um, you know, as Bangaloreans, how do we really throw our weight behind this, uh, you know, demand and actually fix this problem? Because all the other things is kind of dependent on this. Whatever we talk about Metro, it's still going to be, there is still a limitation. It takes time and there is a, it's still kind of like the primary, uh, you know, network, but you still need buses to fix in uh, to fill the last mile needs. So I, I just want like this is sort of an open question, but we've been talking about it for so long, so many campaigns, so many great initiatives, yes, but somehow it feels like we are running to stay in the same place. Can I take a shot at it, Srinivas? And please, please, please. You, are, yes. you, you are a subject matter expert, but I'll pour my emotions here, Shri Meera, because <laughs> it's 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 quite evident that city has grown too fast. There has been there has been a lack of proactive strategy and planning and execution beyond compare. So there have been challenges when the different strategy planning and execution doesn't work. You know what happens at home in office and in city, it's the same problem. There is, there is an intent I see now, which I have never seen before. And before I signed up my contribution to this P2P initiative, getting the force of the corporates together, 
I did my due diligence. I can't promise that all the problems can be solved, but there's an intention for the first time that eight government organizations are ready to work together versus each going off on their own. And that is what has happened over the years. And that's why you see unorchestrated planning and execution. For the first time, I believe that if we can get 25,000 data points on the survey by end of next week, that data will help to do a systematic roadmap and plan, which all the people involved can work together, all the related stakeholders. And Srinivas has put up a team, a steering committee on this. Let's see how that goes, but I have not seen that before. That is my only submission to all the challenges we are discussing today. Thanks. Uh, just yeah. as a side, just a sidestep on that point, uh, not just about public transport. From a corporate perspective, how many uh, you know companies do you see actually plying their own sort of buses and vans and all to? Uh, because at one point this was. The style, you know, the de facto way people got to office. They yeah. had office buses. In fact, the apocryphal story is that in in the nineties, people used to think Infosys was a bus service because they had these blue buses all around town, you and know. everybody went by bus. And then, of course, uh, I think it was probably late nineties or two thousand or something, and they gave these uh, interest free loans or low, uh, you know, low cost loans for employees to buy because, but to buy, you know, cars and bikes, because that was aspirational at that point, but we didn't realize what that would lead to. That was a starting point. And after that, uh, you know, people just became used to, uh, you know, buying cars and bikes where they're kind of stepped yeah. up. Right. And we had not, we somehow not changed that to say, okay, arriving in life does not necessarily mean you have to buy a car. Right. Well, it's a, just, yeah. It's a very interesting demographic change, and I'll call that out. The millennials or Gen Z are totally asset light. And I, I, I work with them. 70% of my workforce out of 13,000 employees at VMware is Gen Z. And they don't believe in owning or owning a house and buying a car. Mindsets have changed. There are chances that if in a mall, you misbehave on not being sustainably conscious. There are chances that a school kid will correct the parent. Try it out. Try to throw a wrapper in any mall next time. And a five-year-old, nine-year-old kid will walk up to you and say, uncle, auntie, this is not good. Can I help you? And they will throw it back into the dustbin. That awareness is going to change the next generation. And I'm not worried about that. So to answer your first question, Meera, we will be surprised. 90% of corporate employees are sick and tired of traveling on their own vehicle because there is no interaction. The beauty of company provided transport is networking and chit chatting. You miss that if you're own, driving your own vehicle because you're stressed out. The energy levels by the time you travel one and a half hours is gone. You are done for the day. Think about traveling back in peak traffic. So I think that's the path of least resistance. To tomorrow, if the public transport improves, especially the end-to-end -end connectivity, which we are discussing, if there is a systematic app to help track this and facilitate and execute, I have no doubt corporate employees will give away their vehicles. Number two, to your question on how many companies have their fleet services, you would be surprised, Meera and the team, 75% they have such services today. With the caveat that in the pandemic, a lot of transport providers didn't make ends meet. The vehicles could not be maintained. The drivers left for their hometowns. So now we have a problem of demand supply, massive demand supply issue. That's why you don't get Ubers all on time. 
Metadose and smaller vehicles are completely booked three shifts a day. Some of these drivers are running 22 hours nonstop. So be careful, it's a cause of concern. Maybe your Ola driver has not slept for last 18 hours. It's a challenge, yes. but, but there are means and ways to solve this is my submission. That's true. Not just, uh, you know, cab drivers, but there are also huge repercussions of the current situation on BMTC zone drivers. In fact, so many yeah. of them have told me like earlier, they would cover a trip in about like an hour or so. Now they're taking like two and a half, three hours and they're continuously driving, you know, uh, they're uh, complete, trying to complete their schedule within their whatever, 12 hours or something. It's crazy. So it's just not humanly possible to do that. We, they are frustrated, their health, uh, you know, and well-being is affected. And I think it's something we have to keep in mind because you can't just separate. It's not us versus them, right? And Ajayan, you talked about children. So that was like, I'll, I'll just wrap up with, you know, a couple of questions. Then we have some questions from the audience as well. Uh, speaking of children, like there is, I see a lot of like, gap right there are of course children who go to you know school by buses that there is one category but especially in you know in the peripheral areas uh when with parents who can afford to send their by car or school bus i know i have seen a lot of children have never even stepped inside a bus okay the parents have grown up we've all grown up uh, you know taking public transport but once you kind of reach a certain level and you have this certain okay you live in a gated community or an apartment and you have a car and a driver and the children are dropped and picked up how do we get them to have a sense of reality right and in a way all of this what we're doing has this whole negative externality we are breathing in whatever is caused by all of these number of cars and bikes Right. And how do we, and at some level, you know, forget us, at least for the children, how do we really start looking at the future? How do we plan? And Shrey, I'd like you to come in with this as well, both from a policy perspective as well as immediate action. How do we get children to kind of internalize that this is their future? Public transport is their future. They have to get on it. They have to create the demand for it and advocate for it as well. Uh, so I would actually like to start off with uh, giving an example. So recently we had an interaction with the Dutch cycling embassy uh, members and one of them had a very interesting story. So he told us that uh, his son, who is just four years old and, uh, you know, he goes to school where he's taught a subject to understand a responsible behavior on road. So they teach them, uh, you know, for example, if you see a cyclist. Uh, you need to give give way. Like if you're driving, you need to give way. If you're walking as a pedestrian, you see somebody with special needs. How do you react? You know, it, it's very simple. So it's like a yes, no, uh, situation-based uh, questions. And I found that really interesting. So uh, actually, I initiated a project uh, very recently where in Maleshwaram, we've started reaching out to schools uh, to interact with these students and to get into classrooms to explain what sustainable travel is. Because I also love the example that Jain said. So even when we were in school, we were taught not to litter, you know. So these things we've been taught. But in terms of uh, travel and sustainable modes, I don't think we're there yet in terms of awareness. So uh, that is something that we are targeting. And I'd also like to go back to something that Jain was talking about. Uh, with corporates uh, giving incentives to their employees for sustainable travel. So we are actually working on a research project to develop a toolkit of incentives that employers can use to incentivize employees so that they use sustainable modes. And at the end of the research project, we will be doing a short pilot. So I use this platform to uh, invite for collaboration. If uh, any of the corporates are interested to take up this pilot with us and the research organization, we would be really happy. So, uh, yeah. Uh, definitely will get you the support. Meera and the team, I have a submission, right? Uh, how many teachers in this audience? Just raise your hands on the reaction button at the bottom. How many teachers on this forum today? Any, anyone, at least one? Anyway, the point I'm making is kids worship their teachers even today. And you can't deny that. If school starts asking a simple question, how many of you use personal travel, personal transport? It will start changing. The kid is going to go home and say, dad, I want to go with XYZ. My friend is going in the bus. 
I don't want to go in the car. The change will start immediately. Bet you. Same in the corporates. If your receptionist early morning greets you good morning and also supports that with a question, hey, how was the commute today? The change will start. It's simple. That's why today you'll see my approach. We sometimes talk about impossible things and lose hope. We, be, we have become pessimist as a country, as citizens. Even today, you see the amount of chat messages. There are three suggestions and 15 criticisms. We have to overcome that. And simple steps. Teachers asking, how did you come to school? Facility manager greeting and with a smile asking, how did you come to office? Change will start. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Um, let me just move to some of the questions in the uh, chat box. Um, so uh, Krishnan had made this comment about uh, trains. I know we didn't really get into suburban train uh, today. Srini, if you want to just give a current state, because this audience may not be uh, you know, tracking it. Uh, what is the current yeah. state? And uh, I, I know that we can use trains from, uh, you know, there are like couple of lines and it actually makes a huge difference. And that's a very sort of a well-knit, close-knit audio, uh, you know, commuter set of commuters. They have their own telegram groups. They know which train is coming when and how they can commute and so on. No, I'll, I'll keep it short because I'm very- MG uh, Road to, to hear yeah, Suranjan Das. Really, yeah, I'll keep it short. Uh, I'm very eager to hear what uh, uh, members of the audience have to say and we should give more time for that. Uh, the suburban train project is uh, being implemented by an agency called K Ride. K Ride is an agency similar to BMRCL. Uh, it's a partnership between the Union Government of India and the State Government of Karnataka. Both of them together have formed this. This is their office is in uh, Rajaji Nagar, uh, across from uh, Ryan Mall. Um, Shagaro Gupta is currently the MD. For those of you that uh, know Bangalore, he was earlier the BPMP commissioner on best comment and so on. So he is the guy that's running it right now. Uh, very interestingly, Mira and everyone, a couple of uh, Saturdays ago, not the previous Saturday, some of us were invited by k Wright for a visit to their office and to give a progress update. So somebody in the group said that, okay, this is something very different and new that's happening. First of all, a government agency is inviting some citizens to give us an update on what they've been working on. And they even gave us coffee, tea and lunch and things like that also. So it was just, you know, and there all the models and the presentations and every department came and told us what that department is doing, what are the challenges and what are the routes and all of that. It's going well. It is not same as what some of us thought suburban train could be. Let me also say that. Because right now, just now, Mira mentioned about the existing railway lines where people commute from cantonment, say, city to uh, Whitefield and many places, Hebal to Carmel Ram. Thousands of people today use train in Bangalore for transport. It's a topic for another day, but they use the passenger trains and Marikuppam Express, all these kind of things. But the suburban train is an entirely new network. It's India's first modern suburban rail network we're getting in Bangalore. It very much looks like a metro and uh, it has four lines and it is connecting brilliant areas. 80% of the land is given by railways. It runs parallel to the railway, but different network. Right. So this is important to understand. Other thing that is very amazing, inspiring that they said to me and I'm, Shreya is also on this call. They said that they cannot decide, design the, any station or anything without it being a multimodal hub and integration with bus and other metro and other things. So every station needs to be approved by Delta. Otherwise, they can't do it. So that's what they have told us. It uh, it's a, That's the way they are going about the design. It will take a couple of years before we see the first line and four years. But in five years from now, this will carry 10 lakh capacity and it will really bring some areas. I think it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity for our planners and uh, politicians to think of developing other cities outside of Bangalore also. That's how we need to grow. Uh, Bangalore is crumbling under its own weight, as we all know. But this gives you that glimmer of hope. And you can do, you can see a lot of development towards the uh, west side and the north and so on and so forth. So that's coming. So k promised to be more uh, active on social media and give updates to media and so on and so forth. Good work is happening. They have different kind of challenges, but they're doing really good work. 
they are working on live rail tracks where long distance trains are running. So therefore, you can't see much what they're doing. They told us, you know, metro, you can see a pillar here or a work there, but suburban you can't see because they are in the railway network and, you know, they only work in a limited period of time. So good things are coming. Uh, we just have to be patient. Uh, thanks, Srini. There was one more point about cost, which is actually a pretty fair, uh, you know, argument in the sense BMTC's uh, uh, ticket rates are actually higher than many other uh, bus transport services in other cities as well. Of course, I mean, I'm not including Shakti as such right now in the conversation, but in general, right? And doesn't it make a difference if it's going to be, you know, quicker and cheaper, you know, uh, to take a uh, your two wheeler uh, in even in your, within your own neighborhood, you would rather do that than, you know, to, to take a bus, right? In this short distance. And the other point, like uh, I think Nagesh had pointed out was BMTC's routes have to be if I remember right, they have this, they used to have this policy of at least 17 kilometers or something. I don't know really why. What is stopping them from having like three, four kilometers short, quick services? And, and when you take these multiples, uh, you know, routes to get to your destination, one, it'll be quicker, but unfortunately right now it's much more expensive. When you jump buses, you're actually, you end up paying more and people keep waiting for their actual, that one route which comes once in an hour, right? That doesn't make sense at all. So from a design perspective and a route rationalization perspective, there's a lot that can be done within uh, uh, BMTC as well. And uh, Shreya, do you want to come in from, again, like uh, from a planning perspective, what are the things that you would recommend uh, both, uh, you know, especially buses uh, to, to uh, bus services have to consider? Uh, I would comment on the distance part that you mentioned about two or three kilometers. So I think that would be more ideal if we're running like a loop service. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, people have a time constraint. So if you say I complete a loop within 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then uh, the distance of two to three kilometers would make sense. So uh, that is something that BMTC can consider. On the cost, I don't think I would be the right person to comment. I think Srini would have a better answer to that question. No, I, I, you see, for cost sensitive is very, very important. We have to remember that, you know, if you if you talk to people on Twitter, you will get a feeling that cost is not important. And today itself, I made a random poll and very few percentage of people chose cost as a reason to not use public transport. But that's because Twitter doesn't represent Bengaluru. Twitter represents a certain type of Bengaluru. And we are Remember that we are 1.6 crore people with one crore vehicles. Uh, Mira, we have already exceeded the vehicle to human ratio. If you count the above 18 population, because children cannot own vehicles or drive vehicles legally. So we have more vehicles than adults in the city today, right now. We don't have to wait for any future. So we already crossed that, the average vehicle ownership. But at the same time, so the, the number of people that, that earn a certain amount of money, those that earn like one lakh a month are very few in the city. We kind of seem to think that uh, all the tech bros and internet billionaires are all here, but they're very few, hardly any in numbers. They make they don't make much difference. It doesn't matter if the billionaires take a car or flight or bus or whatever. It does That never makes any difference to the public transport or congestion in our city. They can role model good behavior. Sure, they can inspire others. From that perspective, yes. So we need to do this, what you just said, two-wheeler. Is it cheaper to go in two-wheeler than bus? You lost your game because two-wheeler takes you from door to door. Bus doesn't. So if two-wheeler is cheaper than bus, why am I taking bus? I won't. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. So you need to think from that perspective. That's why we ran the campaign for half the fares for everyone. But now we got free for women, half the population itself. So, which is one way of going about it. So at a policy level, government need to think. There is a, uh, I want to use this forum to communicate that nearly 150 cities in the world today, at this moment, okay. across 38 countries have entirely free public transport. Public transport. It's a government policy. Elections are fought on this agenda in Boston and Europe and many other cities, mayors uh, you know, argue this point and win elections because investing in public transport is investing in people, investing in livelihoods, investing in climate change, all of that. The cost of BMTC operations is minuscule. It's a very small amount compared to many other public investments that we make. 
So somebody needs to take a look at it. Right now, it is seen as an electoral issue. We need to find win-win scenarios where it is politically beneficial as well as beneficial to the planet. When that kind of leverage or, or mapping happens, good things will happen. I think Mumbai has reduced the bus fares. Chennai has made it free. Permanent Delhi has done it. So this trend is catching on. Right. So this is happening right as we speak. Now we need to balance these things and build out public transport. Building public transport is at a one level. Even if the service is not reliable, comfortable, X number of people will take it purely from an affordability point of view. If you make it comfortable, reliable, Y number of more people will take it. The more people that are currently using car and two-wheeler take it, the better it is for the congestion and the pollution. So this is the magic uh, window as we call it. We need to arrive at it. That's what we're trying to do in this personal to public uh, campaign right now. Not to convince the already convinced. They're already converted. Many, almost everyone I see on the screen are public transport users, if not daily, you know, frequently. Right? That's good. We need to find people that are not in this Zoom call or any other and see if they can get on this. That is the big challenge in front of us. Uh, right. Uh... Yeah, right now we don't have a mayor, so that's a, another problem. But uh, <laughs> uh, at least can we, I mean, we have like about three minutes left uh, and I don't want to take too long. Uh, I had, there are a lot of points here and some of them are like Marwan has asked about the calendar of uh, projects. So definitely all those suggestions we will look into and uh, request for information, we will go back and like put it out for sure. Uh, that is there. Um, we will also look at like, specific questions that we haven't been able to answer. I think I've done a lot of it and uh, there are a lot of comments, of course. We'll put it all together. Uh, but finally, before we wrap up, I just want uh, you know the panelists to kind of, what is that uh, very specific goal, an OKR or a you know smart goal as a way, however you'd like to look at it, uh, that you would give for the city, right? What you want like BMRCL to do or a BMTC to do or even BBMP. Fundamentally, I mean, unless you have walkable streets is really all of this is going to be moot as well, right? People have to be comfortable and find it convenient to walk and get into the public transport. Uh, and of course, make public transport inclusive, low floor buses and all of those, you know, uh, escalators for uh, metro stations and so on and so forth. Given all this, what would be that, like, uh, you know, can you sort of frame this in this very specific goal? Because what we'd like to do today is like, pull in all these points and there've been a lot of, uh, you know, suggestions and ideas as well on uh, social media, as well as like, uh, you know, messages to us. We want to put it all together into a sort of an open letter saying, here is what at least these 50, 60 people who've been participating in this conversation feel and others can kind of sign up as well and give it as a sort of an open letter to the, you know, uh, people in power. So just to kind of add to the discourse and make it a, a more articulate and keep it very specific and clear. So, uh -huh. I, Last I words go, to you all. Yeah. I will go second. Talita has been raising her hand. Yeah, but yeah, no, I'll no. give you that framework. See, we have 1.5 lakh autos in Bangalore. That is something also should can be used as first mile, last mile. I don't know what it takes. Whenever I tried connecting, it has been working. Shared autos has been working very well in multiple cities. These can be also acting as feeder services. While we are looking at BMTC to introduce the feeder shuttle services. Right? That is going to take some time. Yeah. I think uh, we all uh, as an institution and as a policy and even adult if that is required, uh, what is required, they also can be groomed and they're part of our ecosystem. Why don't we make them inclusive? It is working well in few parts of within my vicinity, but in HSR, when I try, they say, Ila nim jana baro de illa. That, that is what, because they feel it's IT crowd or uh, elusive crowd, uh, this crowd, right? So I think that bias we need to break and then uh, it's not only local, local, I mean, we need to make it inclusive. That's another point that I had. Apart from carpooling, immediately, I think uh, autos, till we get all others in the system uh, jointly, right? These are immediate steps, I think, that can be uh, uh, considered and uh, we can bring in some change. Uh, just to add to that, Lalita, it's not just about the bias and the, the you know the convenience and the attitudes, but it's also about the regulation. Current okay, rules absolutely. don't necessarily allow it. So it's important. The thing is, it's happening in any case, whether legally or illegally, it's happening. It's about including it in the system, yeah, figuring yeah. out a role for that, and regulating it so that it's safe and convenient as well. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Jen, you want to go next? Yeah, I'll give you a nice uh, framework to take away and a challenge to this team. 
It's called the three A. Advocate, appreciate, advertise. Advocate is let's use the new age media, citizen ambassadors, role model, and walk the talk. Do more of this and need help from all of you, Mira and your team. Second is appreciate. I did touch upon this, but today we introduced the AIS. All of you are in the tax zone right now, where end of July, but it's called SSC information sheet. Why can't we think about SSC carbon sheet and incentivize through tax breaks, through special means, anybody who clocks in a particular carbon saving for the year, like income tax, it's called carbon credits. It's easy, so appreciate. Can't we have apps which can track end-to-end -end planning, saving, and along that give privileges in malls, in coupons? We have all this, but it's not integrated. Today we are giving freebies on Google Points by Google Pay. All this is there, it just needs to be integrated. So second is appreciate. And third is advertise. I think Swachh Bharat for all said and done played its part. We couldn't have hosted G20 for the world and made India a role model. Clearly, can we glorify some measurements, glorify role models who adopt public transport, consistently show and measure progress, publish metrics? These are the three frameworks, advocate, appreciate, advertise, Meera. Thanks, Jay. Meera, I wanted to just add one more. I think political will is very, very important. While we could introduce all five guarantees and specifically the uh, Shakti, that three Shakti or this guarantee that was introduced within one month. Did we see that after the election? I think political will is required. I'm sure the government also, if we push, we'll uh, all be considered and uh, we look for those guarantees as well that this uh, buses and transport system will improve. Yes, Raya. Uh, so one immediate target that I think we can achieve is we have, uh, you know, systems that are already in place. Uh, for example, we have metro stations, TTMCs that are already existing. So uh, maybe integration in terms of services. So to make sure that the time uh, a metro arrives at, for example, the Lalbagh metro station, because that's the closest to the Shantinagar TTMC that Dalt is situated in. So maybe some sort of uh, study to understand the timing and to ensure that there is a bus running every 10 minutes between Lalbagh metro station to the TTMC. So um, short measures like that. Uh, also, uh, in terms of the transit stations, to make them more inclusive, to uh, ensure that we have ramps, we have lactation rooms, we have benches, so that people feel comfortable while they use public transport. And uh, also uh, to ensure that around the TTMCs, around transit stations, you have uh, proper footpath infrastructure. So uh, that's something that BBMP can look at and uh, ensure that it's easy for people to walk down. So I think these are things that we can do very quickly and uh, these would be short term measures. Thanks, Shreya. I heard that BMTC has got a beautiful, uh, you know, waiting space or a rest, uh, resting space and Majestic coming up in Majestic. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Mira, for uh, creating this platform and, uh, you know, bringing so many of us together. I think uh, this year is a very big year for Bengaluru and uh, every year from this year is going to be a bigger year next year and, and the following year and so on, considering uh, that all the investments that the government has been making in enhancing public transport are now being realized in a way that is accessible to people. So now we need to make sure that uh, enough people are using them and all the investment is being put to good use. Uh, first and last mile is the biggest, single biggest gap in people switching to public transport. And that should be the big point of discussion. Uh, and I think, uh, as a policy, uh, the the government needs to look at the return on investment on the public money that they are doing, uh, that they are spending. And <clears throat> the unfortunate reality is that whether it is public education or public health, most of us uh, have checked out of it. We don't use them anymore. We use private schools. We use private hospitals. 
same thing has happened to public transport as well we use personal vehicles private vehicles so that is something uh, not acceptable and that will not let the city grow or reach its potential and we'll all be stuck in a traffic jam somewhere and uh, complain about it all day so therefore there is a self interest involved in it so we need to communicate this point that it's not that government is going to do something that will suddenly change everything but we too also have a role to play in all, all this technology evolution, uh, evolution is happening very fast as jayan mentioned ondc is something didn't exist a couple of years ago today it exists so it is changing the landscape in the steering committee of personal to public we have a representative of the auto union as well so we are working with the auto drivers auto drivers have worked with the metro uh, team and came up with a concept called metro mitra which is a last mile auto access guaranteed on meter plus 10 rupees as a convenience charge this to my mind is a very big announcement and a very big uh, and technology is a very big enabler for this so this kind of things and technology is not for the users mind you it is for the auto drivers not for the users to install yet another app so these kind of things are all happening what is needed is coordination and participation from the the biggest elephant in the room in my mind the biggest elephant in the room is the corporate sector they employ a lot of lakhs of people and most of these people have the personal vehicles so if you are doing any of these uh, campaigns or policy it has to come from that point of view otherwise it's a chicken and egg problem remember that government makes a lot of money revenue from vehicle sales and ongoing spare part sales services of auto your car and everyday fuel taxes come to both government of india and to government of karnataka so on one hand you are asking them to improve public transport and ask people to switch there which means that they will themselves have less revenue so that they can fund their other schemes that are welfare schemes or any other governance related schemes so this is a very big challenge for any political uh, party or a government to do so we must understand the reality of how things work and there will always be a balance it's not that everybody in the city is ever going to take public transport it's all about modal share we are at 50% today of people taking public transport we need to increase it to 70% for the first time both political parties the main political parties have made it as part of the manifesto and one of them have won so now we can hold them accountable and say hey you have put this in your manifesto so please deliver it here is how we can support it so policy level changes have to come they will come it's a chicken and egg problem if there are more people using public transport more policies will be made and if the policies are made that will enable more people to use public transport and not having bbmp is a big hindrance i'm glad you mentioned that point uh, mira we do need the corporators and mayors that's how you get local governance that's how you get the feeder buses if you want to get that bus between shanti nagar and lalbagh station the corporator of shanti nagar ward should go and fight with the bmtc and with the bmrc that is not happening today there is no political leadership so it's left to citizen groups and wherever they are en enlightened and organized like the change makers of kanakpur or rr nagar teams they are getting them done because they are working with the local uh, agencies and government agencies so lot of good things can be done and have been done but need to happen at a scale level and i hope that this conversation you triggered will bring us closer to many more people that will work together on this thank you thank you shrini and uh, before i end i just wanted to share like one point that was shared by mr varadrajan of uh, citizens for bangalore and he had just sent me a message saying like you know why don't we see public statements and targets and vision around these issues by our elected readers and the minister for bangalore and so on and and he had proposed a bunch of things that we we should kind of look at as targets so in the space like for example we we will make bangalore walkable and cyclable by 2028 and in terms of public transport he's talked about let's increase the share of public transport to 80% in the next 4 years uh, so these are i think kind of good goals and it's up to us to kind of ensure that this is part of the political discourse as well as the manifestos we have elections coming up we have bbmp election coming up then the mp election next year and if we can all keep the focus on these topics and ensure that you know they're part of the agenda and it it uh you know it benefits uh political leaders from actually executing and doing the right thing so it's not just good from a perspective of sustainability and climate change but it's also good to actually just make the city livable right where we have actually you know roads are for streets are for walking and and roads for like commuting but not necessarily that it has to be in a car or a, a bike 
so i think if we can kind of change starting from our mindset to you know the actual action by uh, the various agencies and get them to work together whether it requires a you know bmlt or any format or an npc working let's get put that all together and let's provide that you know the push to make that happen and uh, with that i think we kind of quite run out of time and i shall uh, conclude thanks everybody for being here it's been a wonderful uh, discussion a uh, lot of articulate uh, panelists we've had excellent points that they've raised and great points in the chat as well and we will put it all together and you know share it as a letter and for anybody to come and like sign as well thank you everybody and good evening and have a great weekend very well conducted meera hats off to you as well and thank you everyone thank, thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.